morning and welcome to worship. Today in the text that we're invited to share, we hear about the priesthood of all believers. And um, Lennox is actually going to join the priesthood of all believers through the gift of baptism today. So we're very excited to have that happen. Um, we will also celebrate the milestone for the third graders and half communion. And yes, we'll try our best to get you out on time. I don't even know if there's a game. So we'll try to make it before the game. How's that? The game is at noon. <laughs> well, you won't be making it to the game. Sorry, folks, to disappoint you. This is all you get. Well, and you need to leave early. No, no keyboarder at the end of the worship. I'm just glad you all carry the cross with me. And there's my little symbol. Um, many of you have held it already. And there really is no rule to this cross, except that it needs to pass from one to another to symbolize that we all share in the cross of Christ, that the cross fits everyone. And... The only rule there is, is that I would like it back at the end of worship. Now, if for whatever reason you feel compelled that this cross needs to go home with you, I'm not going to fight you for it. I can't purchase a new one. I'll be okay. But if you can return it to me at the end of worship, that's fine. If you ever wish to have one, I'll be glad to give you one also. So, we'll I'll start with my acolytes. You'll need to pass it on. But the other rule is... I said there are no rules, but you may have and hold on to it as long as you wish. And if it's all through the worship, that's fine. Um, others will get a chance another time. Nobody will ever pull it out of your hand, okay? Unless the keyboarder that has to leave early. He's always a little, but we'll be okay. Page number five, as we worship together as the people of God, please rise. In your blue books on page five, you find the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sins. Let's take a moment for silent confessions. God of glory and God of peace, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior, amen. Now, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away, and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's people share God's peace. I invite you to remain standing as we sing out of the blue book number 105. 105 from the blue book.
day found on your celebrate insert. Generous God, your son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your spirit and in all we do empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time I invite you to be seated. The celebration team invites us to listen to Make This Child Yours and I invite Lennox and her family to come up and gather around the baptismal font while they play. is really alert makes us fun watcher I invite all of you to please join me in the red book in the front portion of the book on page number 227 227 in the front portion God who is rich in mercy and love gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism by water and the word God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ we are united with all the baptized into the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Sponsors, who have you come to present? <coughs> Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, as parents, do you desire to have Lennox baptized into Christ, then please answer with, I do. Very good. I was just going to say, I always ask the parents, I should actually ask if you are ready for your sister to be baptized, and it looks like you are. Very good. Now, God invites you, as you um, bring Lennox for baptism, to do the following things and respond to his invitation. To live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and to the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that Lennox may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. As parents, do you promise to help Lennox grow in the Christian faith and life? And please answer with, I do. Now, sponsors, this is your line. Do you promise to nurture Lennox and her family in the Christian faith as you are empowered by the Holy Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Then please answer with, I do. And you thought you'd get away. You didn't. Here we go. People of God, all of you that are gathered here, do you promise to support Lennox and her family and pray for her and her family in her life in Christ, then please answer as if you mean it with, we do. we do. Now, people of God, I ask you to please stand. But first, I have three questions for you that are gathered here up front. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Then please answer with, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Then please answer with, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Then please answer with, I renounce them. People of God, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I'll sneak right in here, if that's okay with you girls. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You may be seated at this time. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Throughout the water of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Did you get wet? Yes, that's what baptism is for. We're people that walk wet all the time. Isn't that cool? You can actually splash others with it too. That'll work. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given you life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Does she like that? Very good. There we go. You may hold her over. You ready to watch? Lennox, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. She does. And of the Holy Spirit, three in one. There we go. She actually wants more. That's plenty. I'll come around here. We give you thanks, O oh God, through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons a new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to new life. That part they all don't favor. I give this to you. Lennox, child of God, you have been marked and sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You ready to help me light the candle? Can you reach that? Ooh, together we can. There we go, tippy toes. Can you hold it straight? Just upright. Don't get your hair on fire. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. You both can hold on to it, actually, that shares the light. How's that? Let us all welcome Lennox, the newly baptized, into God's family. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's redeeming and creative work to all the world. Okay, now we have a baptismal medallion. I'll let you hold on to that. And I hold it. You hold that up, all three. That's done by Carol Mackey. And um, it's the symbol that God will wrap his loving arms around Lennox all her life here and in the life to come. At this time, I think we share the piece. Oh, the offering. Well, good. You shared the piece already. You may be, see, you may be seated. You are already seated. Now I'll go around and uh, take Lennox on my little walk. You may blow that up if you like.
The reading today comes from Numbers, chapter 11, verses 4 through 6, 10 through 16, and 24 through 29. The rabble among them had a strong craving. And the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised an oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it upon the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. At this time, let us sing Jesus Loves Me as the children gather up front. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We're not quite ready yet, but you can sit down with it for now and hold on to it. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. Now let me ask you, at home, do you have chores? All right, all right. So let me ask you the next question. How would you feel if you would be the only one at home who had chores and everybody else just gets to have fun? You would like that? You're the only one doing chores, everybody else has fun? Oh, yeah, you don't get paid for chores. Yeah, you do, okay, but no, let's just think you don't. So how do you feel if you would be the only one ever doing chores? You'd good, you bad, okay? All right. Now, there is a fairy tale there's a fairy tale about a girl that is the only one who has chores and everybody else has fun and she will not get paid for it. What's the fairy tale? Cinderella, very good. There also is a Bible story about a man by the name of Moses. Let's just not worry about the pots at this time. Let you hold on to your pots and so we'll do that in a little bit. Oh, no, we're not doing it right now. Right now is my story time. Actually, it's God's story time. So we do everything at its time. Now, Moses was the one who felt he's the only one who needs to do chores. So, can you give me a big eye roll? Have you ever rolled your eyes? Okay, give me the biggest eye roll you can come up with. 
Like really, for real eye rolls. Teach those kids what an eye roll is, please, everyone. Oh. All right, that's how Moses felt. You got one? Oh, good, you're a pro. Now, an eye roll sometimes nobody really sees, right? So the next thing when you don't like something, you start to sigh. Do you know what sighing is? There we go. Listen to Garrett. Oh. Can I please have a big sigh, a Moses sigh? First, Moses had an eye roll. He said, I don't want to do this with those people. And then he had this big sigh. Oh, really? Do I have to? And nobody actually paid attention. And finally, Moses said, I have enough. I'm going to tell you, God, how I feel about that. And he did. And here's what God did. God said, I'll send you a helper. Actually, I sent you 70 helpers. And I give them something that all of you have. What do all of you have? What actually is something that Lennox got today for the first time? What do you think? Did she get love today? She did. Did she have love before? Yes, yeah, she was loved before, so love doesn't work. What did she get for the first time that she never had before? Baptism. And who comes to her in baptism? The Holy Spirit. And all of you have that. And all of you have that. And so God took that Holy Spirit because Moses was tired and divided that Holy Spirit up about all those people. And he said, you don't have to do it all alone. All of us together will do. So who is the church? Just Pastor Dirk? No. All of us together, all of us together is the church. And we all get to be together and work together. And one way, here comes the noisy offering. One way we do this is there's so many needs out there, right? So many people who need help, causes that we need to support. And so we are being the church together by collecting the noisy offering. Not just one person, but all of us. So before we do that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we all can be church in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, if you do already have a pot, you go down any of the aisles. If you don't have a pot, there are some left here. Watch the table. And if we need more, there are some in the back. Okay, do you want to pick one up from the back? I need more pots. They're in the back. Just go get them. in the backpack program um, from preschool all the way to fifth grade. And um, it is sponsored by the Lake County Food Pantry. So thank you for helping us make that happen.
God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm just wondering, do you know what a bad day is? Did you ever have a bad day in the last few days or weeks or months? You know, a day when everything goes wrong that could go wrong? A day when you encounter too many people who may be a little bit too negative despite a few positive intentions? Well, Moses certainly knows how that feels like. He had a bad day because he was constantly surrounded by many, many people who were complainers and whiners. Like it says in these first lessons, the people would plead with Moses. They would plead with him during the day. And he would hear their weeping and whining all night long. If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers for nothing. The melons for nothing. The leeks for nothing. The onions for nothing. And the garlic. Who are those people who are complaining here? Who are those people? Well, those are the people who were rescued and delivered by God from slavery. Those are the people who lived under slavery for 400 years in Egypt. They were oppressed. They didn't have any rights. Many of them were killed. They were treated like animals. And for 400 years, they were looking for a way out of that slavery, for a way to be free. And so God did something about it. He led them into the desert. He rescued them from their oppressors. And it didn't take long, and they started to complain. It's interesting. I do the same thing. Maybe you are different. But when I look back at really bad times in my life, for me, my worst time probably was college. Um, we had a, a lot of struggles during that time. But when I look back, interestingly, it's the best time I ever had in my life. And somehow our mi mind plays tricks on us. Modern Bible translations put it like that. Some troublemakers among them wanted better food. And soon, all, all Israelites began complaining and whining. How many do you think? How many Israelites are we talking here? Well, between 100,000 and 1 million Israelites. It's a, many people with a bad mood. No wonder that Moses was stressed out. It's like spending your entire day with a whining baby. And I don't know, you know, you're smiling. I know how that feels like. Um, we have that little baby in our family, and she has a cold right now. And tonight, she was not so happy. And interesting, it's contagious. If Emma is not happy, Nobody is happy in our family. We used to say if mom is not happy, but it's not true. It's not true. Having a bad day is contagious. And I think that's why it's so important that as Christians, it's our responsibility, and I'm serious about that, to watch our mood swings. If we want to be an agent of God's grace, if you want to be an encouraging presence of God in our life and in other people's life, we have to watch our mood. We have to watch our attitude. 
The situation got so out of control that Moses finally had enough. And so he turned to God and he said something like, I don't need this anymore, God. I don't need this anymore. Who am I? Did I give birth to those people? No. Am I responsible for those? No. And so he ended up saying, if you don't do anything about that, if you don't fix it, I quit. I'm going to quit. I wonder how often you feel like quitting. Quitting your job, quitting school, quitting church, or even worse, quitting your marriage. It's not always fun. I'm convinced that we were all at that place where Moses was. I have enough. And God actually did something. It's really interesting. He said, take 70 of those elders and go to the tent of the meeting. Take 70 people. And then he continued saying, I, God, will take some of the spirit, the spirit which is up on you, Moses, and I will transfer that spirit to all those 70 people. Why? So that you will not have to bear the burden that you bear right now. They, the 70 other people, shall bear the burden of the people with you. So you will not have to bear it by yourself alone. So what is God doing here? Well, he is delegating the responsibility, right? The responsibility of leading God's people from one person, Moses, to 70 others. It sounds like a modern-day management principle, right? The principle of delegation, the principle of teamwork, the principle of team leadership, the principle of cooperation. So the question is, how can we apply that in the context of the church? Well, first and foremost, the church is never supposed to be a one-man show. You know, some people think, somehow, even in the Lutheran church, that the pastors are the people who are supposed to do ministry. It's not true. The only thing that we are supposed to do, actually, is training you, helping you to do the job. That's why Martin Luther, you know, the founder of our church 500 years ago, and that was extremely radical, came up with a teaching of the priesthood of all believers. The priesthood of all believers. Luther knew that all Christians are called to carry the burden of ministry. And so he reminded us over and over again that everybody, small and tall, rich and poor, really, really gifted, not so gifted, I don't think that there is something like that, actually, has something to give. Everybody has something to, to give because we all, like your, your daughter today, we all receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in baptism, right? Dear friends, since we are all part of the priesthood of all believers, which is really unique for any church, since we are all part of that, the question is, what does it mean for us? Well, I heard somebody saying that God, God, hides full-time ministers in doctors, in nurses, 
He hides full-time ministers in musicians, in truck drivers, in carpenters, in janitors, in professors, in entrepreneurs and business people. But most important, and that's really important for baptism, he hides full-time ministers in parents, in dads and moms, grandpas and grandmas. Martin Luther wrote, that was 500 years ago again, which was extremely radical, most certainly fathers and mothers are what? Apostles, bishops, and priests to their children. For it is they who make them acquainted with the gospel. It's not the church, it's interesting. It's not the church. So let me ask you, how many full-time ministers do we have today? How many? Well, the answer is all of us, right? All of you. Me, you, you, and you, we are all full-time ministers. Now, God certainly has called us, cleansed us, commissioned us, and empowered us, every one of us, with the Holy Spirit in our baptism, to do what? To share the joys. It's a joy and to share the burden of ministry. That's why I think, personally, that being a pastor should be one of the least stressful jobs in this world, because I can share it with you, right? If you have a problem, I just can call you. Hey, do something about it, right? It's really great. You can lean back and relax. So how does it look like to be a pastor or an apostle in your daily life? Well, it may mean that you are a peacemaker, a peacemaker in the context of your family, or job, or school. It may mean that you work for justice. There's a great link that you can use today in the bulletin, and we'll talk about that in our announcements. It may mean that you live generously, but most important, it may mean that you are Jesus 24 hours, seven days, 365 days a year. You are Jesus for others. It's my prayer and my hope that all of us may claim our place within the priesthood of all believers knowing that Christ, Christ has already claimed you and me. Amen. Please stand as we sing together number 63, number 63 in the blue book.
call upon Sandy Rohde and her Milestone Ministry Committee representatives to come forward for the presentation of the third grade Bibles. Good morning. As she said, we are giving the Jesus Storybook Bible to the children today, but we will present them to the parents so that the parents can present the Bible to their child as they promised at baptism to put the Holy Scriptures into their hands. So as I call the student's name, I'd like the parents to come along. Ainsley Allen, Angel Bruna, Caden Drouse, Rannick Fierstead, Braden Gust, Brooklyn Holman, Ryan Morse, Macy Patch, Elena Rohde, Caitlin Schoenberg, Devaney Shaw, Matthew Streff, Garrett Van Leer, and Jake Weeman. Garrett and Jake, come forward. We had a great time learning together about God's Word, and I thank all of you for coming to take that time with your child to learn about our faith and to grow in it together. At this time, I invite you to join me for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your word to live by, to be participants in your story. We thank you and we ask that those third graders be inspired by this holy word to live by. In Christ's name, amen. At this time, oh, some of you have it already. I'll have the parents present it, but that's quite all right. There's no right or wrong. There's just present the Bible to your child. Thank you. You may be seated. Actually, I show you something. I like your Bible when you're all done with it after many, many years to look just like this. And then you can bring it. Now you may be seated. Then you can bring it back to our Bible um, retirement litany that we do every year in cooperation with this. Um, you can actually bring your retired or your Bibles that need retirement all year long. There's a bin in the entryway of the church that you can drop it in. What happens is we actually pass those Bibles on to a farmer in the congregation and they are properly buried. That's what needs to happen with the word of the Lord. He took us from the ground, we're dust, and from dust we're made, so is his word. And it will be returned to the ground as a gift of thanks and will nourish new life to come forward. So if you have Bibles that look like this or need retirement, feel free to drop them in the bin. I invite you to join me for um, the prayer that's printed in your bulletins. We give, you, we give thanks to you, O Lord of knowledge and truth, that you have provided for us the written word for our guidance and growth. While words written on paper may decay, we ask that the word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, may always live in our hearts and minds, and may we see guidance and knowledge in the wonderful array of media that is provided for us in today's world. In the name of the living word, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I invite you to take a moment to reflect on all those people that have taught you the word of God and to be thankful for them for just a moment. In Romans 10, 17, Paul writes, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The pages once read, now brittle and yellowing, are now returned for renewal. May they make new paper on which truth, beauty, and joy may be known. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The same is true after supper. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, everything is prepared. At this time, I invite the acolytes and the celebration team to come.
next week. That's right. We, one is by giving us your shoe boxes. Your shoe boxes will be Christmas gifts filled. The boxes will be filled, not with your shoes, but with gifts um, for the Operation Brighter Christmas. So we need your boxes, wrapping paper, and we'll need some helping hands that help wrap some of the boxes. And they will become Christmas gifts filled, those boxes for the McFrost Run Boys Ranch. Then there is communion assistance. If you think you can help with um, preparing it in the kitchen, bringing it up here, setting it on the table, and cleaning it back up after worship, we would greatly appreciate if you'd help us to do that. And then there's um, a, a table in the narthex. Um, we are going to have a DSU luncheon. And it's always when the parade takes place. Um, it's a great fundraiser for a lot mission of mission. Work. Mission yeah. work. Commission work, so we could use your help. Please take the time, go down and look. Maybe you can do something. Who knows? Just write it down, your, your name and... The women's Bible study will start on October 1st. That's a Thursday. And we'll meet at 11.30 to 12.30 up in the fireside room. All you have to bring is your Bible. And if you don't have one, there are some in the fireside room waiting for you. So come join me for that. Our in, couples oh. group meets October 4th. At 6 p.m., all you have to bring is a, your, your spouse or your partner. And um, you a dish to children. share. If you have little children, we'll make sure they'll be taken care of also. So but come call join us. Ahead us. Of time. Yeah, it would be nice if we'd know ahead of time that we'll make arrangements. And then we'd like to ask for God's blessings upon Ray and Marla Schultz. They'll be married for 65 years. Now, we have a long ways to go, Pastor Dirk, for 65 years. I'm not so sure if you are going to survive 65 years with me. We'll try our best. Mighty is our Lord who will help us in everything. 122, please rise. Mm -hmm. 